Welcome back everyone, this is Dave from Corn Productions, my co-host Stacy. Today we're talking from, we're doing a rewatch video, Season 1, Episode 6, titled Book 74. Basically what we're doing, uh, we're watching the episode on mute, we're basically doing a commentary video, uh, no notes, no preparation, we're just live reacting. you have anything to add to that? Yeah, so we, uh, we've already, we have our MGM Plus uh, version of the episode loaded. We already got through the previously on, and I am paused on 1 minute 47 seconds, and it has MGM Presents up on the screen, which is where we always start on the MGM Presents screen. You can watch along with us, or you can just listen to us babble, your choice. Yeah, but definitely leave comments throughout, throughout the video um, and add to the conversation. And I actually have absolutely no idea what this episode is about. I know what the next one is about, but okay, I don't so really know Okay, so book 74, one. this is where we're going to get that conversation between Kotri and, and uh, Sarah. Okay, yep. All right. Um, so, yeah, the last we saw is uh, the whole uh, farm scene, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. So, All we're right. going to begin our countdown. Make sure, again, you're starting at 1 minute 47 seconds, MGM Presents, and then we can all hit play together. One, two... Three. Shovel thudding. There we go. Shovel thudding. Shovel thudding. Oh, we got a beautiful, uh, horrific scene. We are starting with the burying of. Is that Nathan? I believe so. It must be. Although it looks like a pretty nasty old sheet that they reused a few times. Yeah. Maybe they dug up the previous ones they used to reuse <laughs> them to bury it. But, and they're going to have a beautiful service. Country is going to perform. There's not going to be a dry eye. All right, so Jay comes. He still has um, Clara's bicycle. <laughs> what if she's, he's ever going to give that thing back? <laughs> and um, he is gathering stuff for his radio. I think he has not approached uh, Jim yet, right? He's going to do that soon here, I think. Uh, no, the, yeah, their partnership has yet to begin. Yeah, he's, he's headed there next, actually, I think. All right, so uh, Tabitha is gathering up all the belongings from the Pratt family that they don't want, and she's going to return them to the storage in the diner. And she just found Kotri's uh, scriptures. Mm. And here's all those graves that Victor dug. He's trying to get get ready this time. Julie was looking at a them for some strange reason. Uneasy at that, I think. And she is wearing a different outfit this time. Oh, here we go. She finds the flowers. Oh, unfortunately, they're not for her. They're not oh. for her. Okay, that's this. We episode. know who they're for. I know what. Yeah, this is gonna. This is the leading to episode seven. So, yeah. 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 We spoiler alert. They're for Jasmine. Oh yeah. By the way, spoilers for this episode and possibly the season. Yeah, this is a rewatch with us. So if you yeah. haven't watched like the whole series, the whole two seasons that are out so far. Go do that yeah, you before should do you that. watch us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because <laughs> we are looking at all those little details and connecting dots here. Katri is really into this ceremony. And he's wearing a normal, um, I don't know what that's called. The Priest outfit? The, the thing that goes over his shoulders. It's not the one that has like the symbol and the night and day and all mm. that. That he, uh, or is it? I don't think I can't it is. tell. I think it's a different. Oh, no, no, maybe that is the one. Oh, okay, so Tabitha is giving the scriptures far. back to Kadri now. Yeah, he's, she said, I assume these must be yours. And this is where he's going to tell us that fact that um, there's no Bibles in this town. Hmm. Yeah. Drinking from my Corn Productions mug, which is purchasable on Dazzle, thanks to my co-host here. Yeah, and the link for that is on the link tree, which is which I linked should. in this video. It should be. <laughs> Unless I, unless I forget it, of course, which I have a habit of doing, but eventually it ends up there. I'm not sure why he's talking about his knees. I think I missed something. He's getting old. He, he has bad knees. It happens to so, us all. So uh, Tabitha's asking about Sarah. He says it's unlikely she survived. He's obviously lying. He, he is, His pants are on fire from all the lying he's doing right now. Um, I'm noticing that the light is not on on this. Yes, I'm also noticing that. It's going to affect our audio a little bit. Should you unplug the connector and plug it back in? Should we? <clears throat> what should we do? I don't know. <laughs> oh, no, it lit and then it unlit again. Yeah, my charger for it is not good. 
I have to clear that. So, yeah, that's not going to help. Okay, we'll just talk a little bit louder. Right. <laughs> uh, so it's not going to pick up on, you know, me being quiet, but yeah. So if you can't hear us, sorry, we're having a microphone issue, but... Um... Yeah, basically I have to spend $30 to clear out my charger port to do, you know, get it to work right, but yeah. Oh, that's not good. No. But there's a shop right over there, so okay. that's, that's good news. If anyone wants to contribute to that, uh, you can send Dave money through Buy Me a Coffee. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, and unfortunately, you know, this is a live react, so we just got to keep going. Okay, so this is where she's, she asked the question, um, or he, she didn't even ask it, he, he inferred the question, did we die in the crash? And he said, no, uh, he said, you know, you were already here mm -hmm. before you crashed into Jade's vehicle, so you can wipe that question off of your list. And I know I've said this many times before, doesn't mean they're alive. You right. could have died before coming to the tree. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, and I almost feel like that could be a misdirect, them wiping that question off the table. But they very specifically, every time they mentioned it, they said, died in the crash. Right. And no, you didn't die in the crash because you were already stuck in Frumville before then, but... That doesn't say explicitly you didn't die mm -hmm. before getting stuck here, before being in the loop in the first place. It's quite possible. And then, you know, now Tabitha's gone, he's going to go to the basement of this here building, and we are going to discover just how big of a liar Katri actually is. This is a miserable place. To sleep. Why, why is she down there with the lights off? Yeah, aren't there lights in the basement? That's a pretty, pretty creepy image of her. Um, her. I feel like there's lights in the yeah. basement the other times we visit this basement. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you can see, uh, Sarah is all tied up. Literally. Literally. I mean, she just murdered somebody. Mm -hmm. Well, she accidentally killed her brother in an attempt to murder somebody else. That makes it so much better. Que sera, sera. Que sera, sera. Um, so... I always want to sing. I you know, know I can't. It's hard. It's hard to see the, the song playing and not hear it or sing it. One, there's a copyright issue. Yes. Two, there's the fact that I can't sing. Well, I swore the copyright issue. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd have no problem if uh, we wouldn't get in trouble for playing the audio. I wouldn't do that to you guys. Subject you to my singing, even though... I mean, unfortunately, that's the reason we do have to, you know, play the episode on mute. Mute. Um, I mean, I suppose we could uh, work it out with headphones, but mm -hmm. that sounds more complicated. Definitely. And these credits go on for quite some time. I'm using my new Winnie the Pooh mug Ooh, that nice. my sister got me for my birthday. And you'll notice that there's a significant lack of dogs now. There's only one. Only one. Lily, you want to come say hi? She's like, who am I saying hi to? <laughs> She's right here. This is my baby Lily. The other dogs went home. They went home. Everybody is back where they belong. So the, the merry-go-round thing that we're not positive is called a merry-go-round that we see in the credits. Yeah. Um, I did take to Instagram asking, what the heck do we call this thing? Nobody gave me an answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I guess we'll just keep calling it a merry-go-round, even though I feel like there's another phrase for it. Hey, speaking of that, uh, on Twitter right now, uh, for those of you who also watch Sullivan's Crossing, I posted a poll asking, who is the worst babysitter? Julie from From, this series, and Chelsea from Sullivan's Crossing. Episode 3, specifically. Yes, we, we, yes. Uh, we had just covered that, and uh, yeah, it, we both felt that um, it was comparable. It, it, um, it, is, it is kind of funny Chelsea, that we, our minds both went Chelsea there. babysitting her brother mm -hmm. and um, Julie babysitting Ethan were very comparable situations. Mm -hmm. And Brad Turner directed this episode. Right, so they're, they're still, still they're there in the spot. They're, they're, they're finishing okay. up. It's uh, Kenny and Boyd. There's just one body, right? Bacon's the only one who died that yes, day. Yes, this episode, or last episode, rather. And Kenny doesn't yet know that she also had a hand in her his father dying. Right. That's not going to be revealed until next season. Wow, 
not sure what they're talking about. <laughs> I'm not either. So he's talking about the talisman worked in the RV the same way it worked in the houses. Oh, this is where he's he's suggesting he's about to go out. Oh yes, and this is gonna piss. Uh, yeah, he's Kenny like, off. I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna take the talisman now that we know a little bit more about it working like it worked in the RV. I'm a little more confident in it. I'm gonna go back out and I'm gonna explore. The last time he did that was two years ago when he found the talisman. Mm -hmm. And of course, we know they they don't know it. I mean, they know it. Viewers who are watching, we're watching this for the first time. You don't know yet that, um, you know, that really bad stuff happened when he was gone that right. time. Mm -hmm. That's when you know uh, Abby decided to like start shooting everybody. So Kenny's really upset here, and will be pointed. At, I forget who ends up pointing it out to him that you know he just lost his dad. You're a father figure to him. He's worried about losing you too. Mm -hmm. Somebody points that out. Boy. It's a very good comment. I don't remember who said it. Hmm. Maybe not. Katri? Man, one of those two. Somebody he talks to. <laughs> uh, and here we have Jim messing around with the electricity. Uh, yes, our first cords. discussion on this is the first time we learned that the electricity is not normal. You cannot plug something in that you brought in your car. And um, he's splicing apart the wire from the lamp, which works, and there's nothing in it. It's just like the coating that mm -hmm. is on a cord. They're not yet at the point where they're digging up the basement. Very soon. Very soon we'll get there. Mm -hmm. None of it makes any sense. He's an engineer. He's, he's, he's looking at this and saying, this isn't how science works. And enter Jade who has pretty much come to the same conclusion that, you know, you and I are the two smart people here. We need to work together and uh, figure this out. I gotta say that entrance of Jade, that is the most Jade entrance I have ever seen. <laughs> he just comes barging right in. I don't even think he's ever talked to these people at this point in the series. And, you know, he doesn't have time to stand on ceremony. He's basically just going to barge in here and say, hey, look, let's get to work. Let's do this thing. Right. So, oh, oh, here's where we hear about the Bible. Okay. I, I thought it was uh, talking to... Book 47, or is it 74? 74. 74. Yeah, I um, it backwards. So, yeah, this is where he's, he's, he's talking about how there's no Bibles. Not a single copy of the world's most popular book. Um, although somebody on Facebook did point out that in the Matthews house on the bookshelf, there is a book of... Bible stories, like a children's picture book. Okay. Um, so there is religious literature, mm -hmm. just not the Bible. So basically, Katri's telling Sarah that the rules say that Sarah should go into the box. Right. Which is most people's, I, I wouldn't say most people, but a lot of people's opinion is that's where, exactly where she should I go. I mean, it's only been, what, a day or two since yeah. uh, Frank went in the box. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, some make the argument, I think I'm one of them, who say that Frank didn't deserve to go into the box. Yeah. If someone does, it's definitely Sarah. Yeah, if Frank deserved to, Sarah definitely right. deserved to. Right, absolutely. But we also argue that Sarah deserves some compassion at yeah. the same time. I mean, she didn't mean to murder Nathan. She <laughs> definitely mean to murder a kid, though. So. She didn't. I mean, should the punishment for attempted murder be the same as murder? Mm, it's debatable. When that punishment is death. Right, yeah. Julie's playing with her new flowers. They're so pretty. Uh, yeah, so uh, Fatima thinks that Julie arranged them, but she said she found it like this, just hanging out on the floor. So weird. Very weird. So that's what, uh, what's his name? I don't even know his name. The weird guy. What's his name? They made the flowers. I'm not sure. This the guy that's sitting on Jasmine. It's been a while since we've, yeah. we've been here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, he uh, that's how he spends his days is uh, arranging flowers for her. Such a sad life he's living. Yeah, very sweet though. He only put that energy into uh, courting a human person. Cor correct. Maybe Trudy seems pretty easy. I think that came out really wrong. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, but... Uh, that's not how you meant it. No, no. <laughs> I broke him. <laughs> okay. 
throat, laughing and choking at my hot chocolate at the same time. <laughs> that was a little bit of a delayed reaction for me, but you know. <clears throat> so they're basically stripping wires to, uh, from the RV and the car. And then we see Mrs. Wu, who's getting visited by, that's Julie, no, it's Tabitha. Tabitha, wow, wow. They you wouldn't know how, uh, how big of fans we are of this show right, and right, how many right. times we've watched. I, I have tears in my eyes we still from like We get good shots that, of those but... boards with mm -hmm. the, uh, the poetry up there. You know, it is actually remarkable how much Tabitha and Julie look the same. They do really look uh, like they're related. Mm-hmm. They did a great job casting wise. Great casting. And uh, Ethan is afraid to go into the kitchen. Yeah, so they're going into the back room, which is the town's storage, all of the stuff that nobody is using. I'm surprised there's so much stuff in storage. You would think people would be using more of it. Yeah, utilizing whatever they could. Yeah. But. I mean, they're smart enough to collect their resources. I'm just surprised that they're not getting more use out of all this stuff. Mm hmm. And something really important is about to happen. Tabitha's about to find the Oh, bracelet. yeah, that's right. That's when this happens. Yeah. And we're going to get some great stuff from Ethan here. So you've got to pay attention to this dialogue. He says this reminds him of uh, his stories. Uh, when the Kramanakal goes to the cavern, the lonely dragon is full of stuff nobody wanted. But for the lonely dragon... All this stuff was treasure. And there's a map of the rainbow sky. So the lonely dragon gave it to the Kramanako. And then she wasn't lost anymore. So the map, okay. So something in here definitely is important. Is it the bracelet or is there something else in here? It's the map on how to get out basically is what he just said. Something in here is gonna lead to their salvation. Hmm. Okay. Is what I got out of talking about the Kramanakal from this eight-year-old. <laughs> and she is very confused right now because she's looking at this bracelet and examining it and convincing herself, which we'll learn when she tells Jim about it, that's his bracelet. She has no doubt about it. That's his bracelet. Is this the scene where uh, he ends up getting attacked by the Civil War yes. soldier? Yes, okay. that's about to happen. Okay. So they went to the tree... Um, they're about to test the radio to see if they can get a signal in the tree. And this is where basically we learn that the reason Jade is asking Jim for help, I mean, he's asking him because he is an engineer and he's smart, but the reason he needs somebody and went to him at all is because he needs someone to climb the tree. Which he could have gone to anybody for that. Yeah. I mean, he knows Jim is an asset, but he's like, yeah, I need you to climb a tree. I'm not going to climb a tree. I'm a billionaire. Right. <laughs> I mean, my my thing is, I'm not going to climb a tree because I'm afraid of heights. I mean, at least not supported heights. Like, if there's a railing there, I'm fine, but... I don't like heights. No, you don't? Yeah, you wouldn't get me out of that tree for nothing. Yeah, he says he gets a row to go. Which is a fair reason. Yeah. And it's a human... And also, you need two people to do this. Right. Because one's put in the antenna and one is working the radio. So his, his initial reaction is to reach for the arrogant reason rather than the human one that would actually get somebody to actually help him. Right. And he does that a lot. Yeah, he that, does. That's Jade's, that's uh -huh. his thing is he always um, speaks before he thinks. Right. <laughs> All right. So Jim's like, fine, let me help you. And um, Jade is less than helpful during this whole let's get the antenna in the tree thing. Mm -hmm. All right, so we are at the clinic. This is, again, the season one clinic, mm -hmm. which if you look at the outside, you can tell the landscaping is totally different than when they rebuilt this building for uh, season two. So we spent a lot of time outside of the clinic in season two. Right. And Boyd is looking for Christy. The lights are doing their flickering thing. Ooh, spooky. It is spooky. Everything's spooky in this place. Mm. And we are down in the basement. And this is the clock that's always stuck at seven. One of our important numbers, seven. So yep. is this room very important? And 
there's the boiler room where Kenny's dad died. Boiler room, which will also be very important in season <laughs> two. What's he even doing? Why is he even doing this? He's just contemplating it all. And Christy is doing, doing laundry. laundry. She's doing laundry. So there must be a washing machine in here. Or did she just bring it back from... It's Christy that's going to tell him that uh, Kenny thinks of him yes. like a father. And that makes sense because she's really close to Kenny. Right. Yeah. So she, of course, would be receptive of Kenny's needs and feelings. That was going to be my next guess. <laughs> Christy's hair when it was long like this. Mm. You didn't like the. Uh... I don't like Christy's season two haircut. No. No. You can blame Mary for that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have to uh, blame Chloe for that because <laughs> she cut her hair. Oh, did she? <laughs> so, sorry, Chloe. The world wants you to grow long hair again. I'm sure Chloe's listening long and she will definitely learn the error of her ways from us. Yeah, it definitely is pretty cute here. Yeah, Boyd gives a, a wonderful piece of advice, which, you know, could apply to Chloe herself. He says, you know, if you don't learn from your mistakes, you're doomed to repeat them. So. <laughs> you know, that's one of the things uh, that some people... You know, the, the critical fans who don't pay attention are like, well, uh, they must wear this. They must be so dirty because they just wear dirty clothes forever. Right. This is the second time we've seen characters doing laundry. It's like <laughs> it's like people have to watch people shower, have to watch people brushing their teeth, have to watch people doing laundry yeah. to realize but twice that they actually now, do in six episodes, we've seen them doing laundry. Right. How much more laundry do you want to watch? Right. Uh, to I know that they're wearing clean clothes. I'm perfectly okay skipping over those things. I mean, there are certain people I wouldn't mind seeing in the shower, but I don't need to watch it to assume that they actually take one. All right, so here's our Book 74 discussion. Um, she, Sarah looks like her clothes need to be washed. She's mm. covered in her brother's blood. It's not a good look for her. She's definitely prettier without all the blood all over. Yeah. And the next outfit she puts on is the one she's going to continue to wear, I think, through season two. Mm-hmm. So Katri is uh, Katri is addressing all of the terrible things that are in the Bible. It's not all good stuff in there. And Fire and brimstone, the apocalypse. He's talking about his arrival to From, and how he's questioning his existence. We don't actually hear his story until season two. No, no, no. I'm wrong. It's next episode. I'm right. very wrong. Next episode, we hear his story. So, Katri says there are 73 books uh, from the Bible, right. correct? And he thinks that Sarah is going to write, or at least help write, yeah, the 74th book. This story, We Are Living, mm. book 74, that's his, uh, that's his guess here of what's going on, is they are in a biblical situation. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason for the episode's title. Right. And... Seven and four are our two from numbers. Right. Which, this might be the first time we're highlighting those numbers. Mm hmm. Probably. Yeah, but, you know, they'll continue to come up, especially as we go through the second season. You know, we see uh, Tilly has four kids and seven grandkids, and the number 47 comes up on the radio, and we'll see those numbers over and over again. You see Tabitha with Ethan contemplating. Ethan's bummed out. Yeah. She's <laughs> contemplating the bracelet. She said she's admiring <laughs> the piece of the Lonely Dragon's treasure. Ooh. So, is the bracelet the important thing? The map? I think maybe it is. Because we know, not because we've been told, but from paying attention, that this bracelet has. Even bigger implications than what we're seeing in this episode. I am positive, and a lot of people disagree, I am positive it's the same bracelet that Miranda is wearing in the 70s. Mm -hmm. I'm positive of it. And that means something timey-wimey happened. 
right. something at some point in this grand story there's a, a time displacement involved mm -hmm. and other people are like nah it's just a similar bracelet but like they I mean they you spend so much up on yeah. her hand like why would yeah. you it felt really you can see it's the same type of stones and the same type of cord. Mm -hmm. The bracelet obviously is important regardless. I mean, we're spending so much time on it, so it has to be. Otherwise, you're just wasting our time if it doesn't somehow factor into the story. All right, so last uh, last time Ethan thought his parents were crazy because they're writing on the walls. Now Tab excuse me, Tabitha's literally cutting into the wall and tearing it down and... That's yeah. bad. They already wrote all over the walls, right? Yeah. So they've already lost the deposit. I mean... And they're going to lose it even more now. You should know what happens when you, you know, start ripping out walls without knowing what's behind them. Right. Without knowing where your beams are. Mm-hmm. We're, we're leading toward, down a dangerous path here. Right. <laughs> and you all see and you all see where that leads. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's going to lead to the death of Tom. I know. Oh. Tragic. Tom... Go yell at her and tell her to stop digging. Please. Let's change the story. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> All right, so Jim gets his... He should bring Rob's back. Right? Yeah, there we go. Rob, go help Jim. Mm -hmm. That would be fun to watch. <laughs> the tree is bleeding. That's usually not a good yeah, sign. Yeah, and, and that's just his hallucination. Oof. Um, and there's those Civil War soldiers all bloodied up. There's a, a limb missing. They are dripping blood this one looks burned and i don't know what do they look like they've been eaten by the monsters you or... know if i'm getting showered in so in blood from all these monsters i think i would move and there's the symbol on the tree mm -hmm. yep this is his second time seeing the symbol and there is a civil war soldier and i'd love to shout this actor out but i forgot his name that's playing the civil war soldier he also does um I believe I, I might be wrong, but based on the like behind the scenes pictures I've seen, I'm pretty sure he is Boyd's stunt double. Oh, okay. He's um, I, I've seen pictures of him dressed as Boyd. Civil War soldiers getting all stabby, and then there's a bright flash, and Civil War soldier is gone, and it's just and Jim, Jim is there, there, and the blood is gone, and all of it was a hallucination. Mm. And Jim's like, what's going on? And Jade's not going to tell him. Right, he's just going to run off. Yeah. And then they're not going to see each other for a couple episodes. Um, I don't think they see each other next episode. I think it's after the events of all the monsters eating everybody. Maybe. Yes, I think we pretty much stay in that story the whole episode. Yeah. Back to the basement. Someone should tell Katri to, you know, they can put some more lights down here. Um, and if you do get a good look around, like, you can already start seeing in the background. There's an old-fashioned wheelchair. Yeah. All of this stuff down here, and we do get clear images of it as the show goes on. And it's worth noting that the stuff in this basement looks very similar to yes. the stuff in the caves, which we'll see in that, 201. That is, uh, yeah, that is a point that I, I think I made at one point or another. That it looked very similar. Yeah, so either it's like the same stuff or it all came from the same era. era. Yeah. So she's talking about the voices and the whole like, you know, they told me we'd go home and that's why I did it and um, try to have faith in them. These voices that I don't know who the heck they are or what their goals are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A little too trusting maybe. <laughs> And he says, do you believe they were telling the truth? Well, they the promised that Nathan would be okay. Well, Nathan's not okay. Right. So. Nathan Nathan is looking pretty unattractive. Nathan's pretty un-all right. Yeah. Unless Abby was right. Yeah. And if you kill oh, yeah. everybody. Right, right, right. It's their escape. And this is all fake. I mean, that's still on the table. Right. Maybe Nathan was, is out right now. My mind jumped to season two, Abby. 
for some strange reason, the one that was in the season finale that I don't, I'm unconvinced was Abby at all. Yeah. All right, so he's like, I'm going to go to the sheriff, and I'm going to vouch for you, and, you know, you're important. We're going to figure this out. Which I'm pretty sure we don't see happen until the next episode. Yeah. I don't think that happens here. No. He He's talking to, um, it's the night of the colony house mm. massacre that he's spending the night with Boyd, and that's when they have all of their conversations. Not in that way. Oh, so, hey, you never know. I mean, they're pretty close, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sarah is just straight up. Alright, so she time. says, bring me paper. Like, he wants proof that I can go to him and, and convince him, help me, I believe you, but help me prove it, right? Mm -hmm. And she asks for paper. We're cutting back to Jim. Uh, Jade has left. He's abandoned him, but Jim's like, I'm still going to follow out this experiment. Um, he managed, you know, he already put the antenna up in the tree while Jade was, you know, freaking out about the soldiers. And he gets static. Which you question whether that actually means anything. Because you think, you've said pretty much in the past that you would get static if there was nothing there either way. Right, wouldn't you get static even if you didn't put the antenna in the tree? I'm pretty sure. Wouldn't you get static where this started in the sheriff's office? Mm hmm But hey, if you guys have a differing opinion on that, I mean, opinion I, on that. I'm definitely not a uh, radio right. signal expert, so. Yeah, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. All right, so Jade is starting to um, obsess over the symbol. He's seen it twice now. It's so two times, right? And it means something. And once you know it, Mrs. Wu is delivering some tea. Some tea. But Jade doesn't want it. Ungrateful. Her watch is upside down. Do you see that? Look at her watch. We're looking at the back side of it. Hmm. Isn't that the back? I think so. Like, not the face of the watch is where the engravings are. Maybe. I don't think it means anything. Mm. I think they were just... Rushing. Rushing. <laughs> Maybe Mrs. Wu was like me and just uh, doesn't quite get dressed a, right. A little anymore. haphazard. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, sometimes a backward shirt or inside-out shirt or <laughs> you, you upside-down shirt. You have done that a lot. The yes. inside-out shirt's not on purpose. <laughs> Now, I like when I was a kid, um, you know, m wearing mismatching socks was a bad know, thing. Yeah, I got made fun of that for for that when I did that as a kid. But you know, nowadays that's the style. Yeah. So where I'm going with this is, I'm a man ahead of my You're time. A right. Exactly. I noticed one of the items that he just passed in the storage. There was a Scotch cooler there. Okay. I feel like we see that in another scene. Probably. And I don't know if it was in the in the caves or. This is where Mrs. Wu teaches uh, Jade about Tom, or not Tom, Christopher. Uh, Christopher. She doesn't know his name, but she, okay. So she said here it's a uh, like a boombox, mm -hmm. and then she pulls out a yearbook, nineteen seventy two yearbook, and in the same box is this journal. That we're gonna, that Jade's gonna carry with him throughout the episodes through season two, um, that you know that we've seen, and in here is the symbol. So this is Christopher's journal. We'll learn that mm -hmm. much later. That Christopher was the person this belonged to, and um, he was doing the same thing Jade is doing, obsessing over the symbol because he was also seeing it. But yeah, whose yearbook was that? Nineteen. It's in the same box, right? So it right. comes from this same group of people, 1972 yearbook. So they would have been in 1978 when the massacre happened, they would have been 24. Hmm. Whoever that yearbook belongs to. Right. So they had a yearbook in Fromville? Well, I'm assuming it's a yearbook someone had in their car. Right, right, right. So they weren't, like, making yearbooks back then, like, in this town. We don't know what this town was. Right, exactly. Was it ever a real town? I mean, it never had real electricity. <laughs> mm-hmm. My personal opinion is the whole town was kind of brought here, piece by piece. 
from real things. They, they right. were just kind of hoarded in the same way people are hoarded in. All right, so she slammed over this drawing. She has no idea what it meant, but they told her, this will, this is your proof, and they saw you bury the bag. And she has no flippant idea what she's talking about, but it definitely will. means something to Katri. Yeah, we will. Not today. Or not. I think today he, he goes and digs it up. Right. Oh yeah. Okay. What it is until right. Like the story behind it until next episode. Boyd's looking for something. Yeah, I'm not sure what Boyd is up to. I just remembered our uh, mic wasn't working. I wonder how this audio is turning out. Yeah, we'll find out when we're done. <laughs> Hopefully, this is something watchable. Otherwise, people are gonna miss me choking to death and uh, walking away. <laughs> They've just been milking. He's carrying a milk bucket and she's carrying milk bottles. Oh, okay, and there's two girls that we'll so, never see again. This is a question that has come up. And even recently I've seen people talking about this. Since Nathan died and he's the one who tended to the animals, who's tending to the animals? Are we taking care of them? Those two uh, extras that just walked by were milking the cows. The animals are taken care of. Good to know. I'm relieved. And boy, oh, okay, so that's what he was looking for. He was looking for a baseball uh, glove because he wants to play catch with Kenny. And Kenny is woodworking or something? Yeah, he's making a new chess set. Oh, oh that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember because uh, his chess set got covered in blood. Mm. So he's rebuilding it. Piece by piece. And, and Kenny's not really into this he, conversation Yeah, he's first. trying to do what... Uh, you know what Christy said and, and be a fatherly figure to him he's like yeah let's go play catch right because uh Alice doesn't want to play catch with him <laughs> right can't have two sons mad at you I mean you can but kind of sucks and this is where uh Boyd I think is gonna reveal the fact that he has Parkinson's yeah. Yeah. He's doing it right now. <laughs> Nothing Christy can cure. Right. So his father was diagnosed around his age. Here we go. Not supposed to be hereditary. It would mm. be extremely rare, but he's convinced he has it. And I'm still not convinced. I'm convinced I have Parkinson's. But I'm a hypochondriac, so. I really, My left eye is twitching. That's a sign, right? I'm really thinking it's... Because they keep telling us it's not hereditary. Right. And I haven't looked this up like in real world knowledge. I don't know anything about it. But for them to point out multiple times that it's not hereditary, that doesn't make sense that you're getting it and your dad had it. <laughs> like coincidentally, you could both have it, but you're not going to have it because he had it. Right. And for them to keep pointing that out, I don't think that's what it is. Probably not. Uh, and I think uh, we have a knock at the door. So I think that's probably the package. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't want to. Do you want to? I don't want to step over the wire. All right. I'll get live recording, folks. Hey. Hi. Um, do you have a small dog eye color? No. No. There's a missing dog? Yes. That, we're hearing it live. Well, I mean, the, the dog itself is There is a dog, dog that yeah. they don't know who it belongs to. It's not yeah. ours. Ours is right here. Yes. So that was interesting. <laughs> Thank you for answering my door. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we uh, were expecting, uh, my husband was expecting a package, so we thought that's what it was. Yeah, it's supposed to be a coat. They don't usually knock, though. Right, no. Okay, so... She's kind of cute. Anyway. <laughs> I didn't see who it was. Yeah, so Jim comes home to find out that his wife is uh, digging holes in the walls. And, oh, oh, okay, so now they're getting to the basement. They're, they're, they're in, the in the basement. Ethan says, we're on an adventure. He brought up the dirt because Mom told him to take some of it outside. What a good helper Ethan is. And Jim's just like... 
what for, there's the bookcase. So one of those books right there was the Bible stories book. Mm. So it's visible in the same episode that we're told there's no Bibles. Yeah, Jim, you should really put a stop. Uh, this. Did you notice? I just saw there's a duck. A duck on the wall. Oh. Upside down. I did not notice. It's a that. wooden duck, and it's hung upside down. That's interesting and strange. Hmm. I don't know what it means, but that felt notable that there's an upside down duck hanging on the wall, like it was a flying duck in its inverted position. And Tabitha's thinking, well, or we've, already, bird. we've already written on the walls and we've torn up some torn holes. Up the wall. We might as well just go home, go downstairs and dig some holes. Yeah, so we learn what she's doing, of course, is she's following the power lines that shouldn't be power lines. And um, they've gotten her into the ground in the basement now. She's digging it up. And are these floors just dirt? Like, they must be for her to just have been able to dig into them so easily. They're, right. There's no concrete level. Like, these are very, very old-style basements where they were literally just a dirt floor to start with. Mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming. Oh, okay. So, so she brings up the bracelet. She's telling him about the bracelet. Yeah. Okay, so here's the details. They'd only gone on a few dates. She made the bracelet for him out of his father's shoelaces. But he lost it in the hospital the night Julie was born. So sometime in the future. He had it for a long chunk of time, right? Between mm -hmm. their first couple of dates and when Julie was born. And she is 16? Yes. Um, That's where we're going with it. 16 anyway. or 17. I think they they specifically said she's 16. They did say some, one of the, okay, whichever one of them. Um, so it's been missing a long time, right? He lost it. And he's like, oh, well, this is just a similar one. And she's like, no, like, look at it. Those are your father's laces um and there's this error on it i think she didn't say that yet she's there here she goes um like this is a mistake that she made she's like look i did this like you can't just that's not just you can't copy that this is the bracelet <laughs> see at the time he had he had told her it's okay there's an error in it that makes it a one of a kind and because it's one of a kind this is the bracelet. There's no questioning that. That this is his bracelet that he lost in a hospital 16 or 17 years ago. And somehow it was in the storage of this place. So on the surface, you think, okay, well, somebody found it in those 17 years. Right. And then they ended up in Frumville. Right. Which is a super odd, weird coincidence anyways. And then... You add to it um, the thought that... I think I see seven. I, I could have swore there were seven, but somebody said there were more uh, of the stones. From that shot counting, which we held on for a while, it looked like there were seven. And he's, he's, Katri is digging up the bag now. Yeah, so this is our first time seeing what's in here. Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense until we hear the story in the next episode. We got a bottle of booze. We got bloody clothes. Yeah, at this point, I'm like, uh, did Katri kill someone? It, it's a bloody right. priest shirt mm -hmm. with the collar still in it. And a candy bar. And the candy bar is where that picture um, that Sarah drew comes into play. It's, it's a very similar image mm. and this is the Cosmo chocolate bar which I always thought seemed very uh, reminiscent of the the candy in Lost. Why bury a perfectly good chocolate bar? I mean, is it here? It. Like yeah, yeah. that's yeah you, you think you don't want that but it was very symbolic to him. And we're next to the uh, we're next to the, the empty swimming pool. I'd really love to see them get this pool up and running. <laughs> yeah, they have to clean it up. There's a significant amount of cleanup they have to do on it. They got time. Mm-hmm. I mean, what else are they doing, right? Right. And uh, Kenny seems accepting of uh, Boyd's trip to the forest now. There's more water in it than there is when uh, Julie and uh, what's his name 
Elgin. Elgin, yes. When they're when they're around there, it seems like there's more water in the pool. Yes, that's because we have that big storm. Right. Like okay, yeah, yeah, two hundred one. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Here's our boy. I don't know. Remember this guy's I name? Can't remember but... his name. I don't think we learn it here. Do we even learn it next episode? Mm. Oh my goodness, what's his name? I forget. So he's heading upstairs. Okay, there's two reasons why I would hate living here. One, no privacy of any kind. You constantly have to people, and I don't like peopling. And two, because of morons like this. Yeah. One person does something stupid, right? and you're going to die. You have to rely on so many people, and that's not a good situation. Yeah, and they're strangers. Mm -hmm. They don't know as far. They right. don't know these people. Yeah, maybe if you shave that mustache, and you might get more Looked leaves. a little less creepery? Yeah. I don't know, try interacting with him. Aww. So there's Jasmine. She found the flowers. He must have put another bouquet out after, mm -hmm. you know, Julie, Julie stole his. Um, she loves him. She wants to come inside. And, and that is where the episode ends. That's where we end it. It's really funny. Kevin. It was in the yeah, credits. Kevin, his name okay. is Kevin. It's really funny because I don't recall the monsters ever being characterized quite like Jasmine is right. here. It, she seems more human. Yeah, there's a lot to say about it. Like, yeah. some people have suggested she's an entirely different type of creature mm -hmm. than the other creatures, than Smiley. But she only appears in season one. I it don't... does not make any appearances in season two. I don't think she's different. I just think she's playing to her agenda. Okay. Right? She has a job to do, and her job is to get in this house. Right. To infiltrate this house. I mean, the other ones follow her. It's not like she does this all on her own. Um, I really think it's it's more about just the manipulation. Right. You know, they do what they can do, but she's playing the long game here. She's been dating Kevin through the window <laughs> for a while, it seems like, right? Well, that's longer than any of my relationships recently. <laughs> and um, and then it's like, oh, well, she never transforms quite as much as they do. It. I just think that she maintains whatever, whatever like, illusion mask they're using to look human. Mm. I think she just contains that more right um and i don't know why like is it their choice to like drop that monster out when they pig out right and she just chooses not to here mm. or is it more about i don't know she's trying to appear as human as she can be like to be even as even after she kills him she right. stays in her human form mm. um but i don't think that that means anything but I don't think she's different than any other monster. No, I don't think so either. I think she's just using different tactics. Mm -hmm. Like the other ones, like once they are in a position where they got you, they lose their human form and they just like go for it right. in their monster form. But and and even Smiley, uh, for example, once you know the once he gets uh, what happens in season two, he's like stuck in his monster form. He can't do use. He can't sum, sum up the illusion. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do we have anything else to say about the episode that we just watched? No, I'm curious to watch it back and see if you can yeah. hear us and yeah. see how, how obtrusive that door interruption was. And um, that's what happens when we say we're going to record live. We're recording live. Yeah. You, you get it as it happens. Yep. Uh, all right, Stacey, be reached at? I can be reached on Twitter, X, Instagram, and threads at TVN coupon talk if you like this video and want to support the channel there are a number of ways to do so you can follow me on twitter at corn productions you can join one of my corn productions facebook pages you can buy something from the corn production store on zazzle like this mug uh, you can buy me a coffee which is a new way to support content creators such as ourselves and of course you can like share and comment on this video as well as subscribing to our channel this is dave and stacy from corn productions signing off